The mystery of the T-34's rear cylinders. Not your average fuel tanks. Hey folks, subscribe to our channel and drop your thoughts in the comments below. We're diving into an epic tale about one of the most iconic tanks in history, the T-34, and those mysterious cylinders on its rear. Spoiler alert, they're not fuel tanks, as many might guess. A while back, I decided to run a little experiment with my buddies. I showed them a picture of the legendary T-34-85 tank and asked, were those cylindrical things on the back? Out of five people, only one nailed the answer. And I'm pretty sure it's because he used to be a tanker and had the inside scoop. The others? They threw out guesses like fuel tanks, maybe. One thought they could hold oil, another suggested water. But they all sensed there was a catch and admitted they weren't quite sure, saying, could be anything. That uncertainty hooked me, and I knew I had to dig deeper. So, today I'm spilling the beans on what those cylinders really are, why they were crucial, and how they tell a bigger story about wartime innovation. Get ready for a wild ride through history. Were those cylinders? If you're a tank enthusiast or a model building geek, you might already know the answer. Those cylinders aren't fuel tanks at all. Their special device is called BDSH-5, Big Smoke Shashka, or MDSH, Marine Smoke Shashka, designed to create smoke screens. Yep, these bad boys pumped out thick clouds of smoke to hide tanks or entire units from enemy eyes. But here's the cool part. The mounts for these smoke devices were super versatile. If needed, they could hold extra fuel or oil tanks instead. Talk about a clever design. The BD Sage 5 was based on the MD Sage, a smoke device originally used on ships. Starting around 1944, during the heat of World War II, these smoke canisters were fitted on a T-34-85 tanks. Their job? To throw up a smoke screen that could cloak advancing troops or vehicles from enemy fire. One canister could churn out smoke for five to seven minutes covering an area of up to two hectares. That's about five acres. Picture it, a massive cloud of smoke rolling across the battlefield, giving tanks and soldiers a chance to move forward or retreat without being targeted. How do they work in action? I haven't come across solid evidence that BDSH-5 canisters were used to hide individual tanks from direct enemy fire, but there's plenty of talk about how T-34 tanks and IL Two attack aircraft used smoke screens to shield advancing Soviet forces. I stumbled upon a tanker's memoir that described a desperate moment when his crew, stuck in a damaged tank, tossed regular smoke canisters out of the turret hatch to obscure their position. That kind of quick thinking could mean the difference between life and death on the battlefield. These smoke canisters weren't just for T-34-85S. minus minus they also showed up on later tanks like the T-44 and T-54. But as time went on, the tech evolved. After the war, new smoke systems called thermal smoke equipment took over. These worked by vaporizing diesel fuel at high temperatures to create smoke cheaper, easier, and more efficient. The old smoke canisters faded away, and their mounts were repurposed for extra fuel tanks. Cool facts about the BDSH-5. Here's a mind-blowing tidbit. The BDSH-5 was buoyant. That's right, it could float and even create smoke screens on water. Imagine a tank crossing a river, leaving a trail of smoke to hide the crossing from enemy spotters. Post-war, the design got even smarter. The metal straps holding the canisters to the tank's rear were fitted with small explosive charges called pyrotechnic cartridges. This meant a crew could instantly jettison the canister and disappear into a cloud of smoke if things got hairy. It's like something out of Hollywood action flick. To really get why these smoke canisters mattered, let's step back to the chaos of World War II. In the 1940s, the Eastern Front was a brutal battlefield. German forces leaned heavily on their air force and artillery to pound Soviet troops. Smoke screens gave the Soviets a way to hide from those deadly strikes buying time to maneuver or regroup. This was especially critical in open terrain, where tanks and infantry were sitting ducks without cover. From an economic angle, these canisters were a stroke of genius. 
The Soviet Union was stretched thin during the war, churning out tanks like the T-34 at a breakneck pace. Historical records show that in 1944 alone, they produced around 17,000 T-34s, eating up a huge chunk of the war budget. Every piece of equipment, including smoke canisters, had to be cost-effective and reliable. The BDSH-5 fit the bill perfectly. It was cheap to make, easy to use, and gave a big tactical edge. Plus, the ability to swap them out for fuel tanks saved on logistics costs. Looking at the bigger economic picture, the Soviet war effort was a massive undertaking. By 1943, about half of the country's GDP was funneled into the military. That's billions of rubles in wartime money. Small innovations like the BDSH-5 helped stretch those resources by boosting troop survival rates, which meant fewer tanks and soldiers lost in battle. It's a reminder that even the tiniest details could have a huge impact. What gets me about these smoke canisters is how they show off human ingenuity under pressure. In the middle of a war, with resources tight and lives on the line, Soviet engineers and soldiers came up with solutions that were simple yet brilliant. Those cylinders on the T-34's rear aren't just hardware. They're a testament to creativity and resilience. I can't help but wonder how many lives were saved because of these smoke screens. It's a small piece of tech that played a big role in history. This story also makes me think about how past innovations shape today's world. Modern militaries use advanced camouflage systems, from smoke grenades to infrared jammers. But it all started with ideas like the BDSH-5. It's a humbling reminder that even the simplest inventions can change the course of events. What if smoke screens hadn't been used? How many more battles might have been lost? Let's zoom out for a moment. During World War II, the Soviet economy was all in on the war effort. In 1944, military spending ate up around 120 billion rubles in that era's prices. That's a staggering sum for a nation battered by years of fighting. Smoke canisters were a tiny fraction of that, but their value was immense. They helped save tanks and troops, which in turn saved money on replacements and training. Fast forward to today, in 2025, and the global market for military tech is worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Smoke and camouflage systems are still a key part, growing by 3 to 5% annually, according to industry reports. The legacy of the BDSH-5 lives on in modern systems, proving that good ideas never really die. They just evolve. The story of the T-34 smoke canisters is more than a technical footnote. It's a tale of human grit, clever engineering, and the drive to overcome impossible odds. Those cylinders on the back of the tank symbolize the ingenuity that helped the Soviet Union turn the tide in World War II. I'm blown away by how something so small could make such a big difference. Now I wanna hear from you. What do you think about these smoke canisters? Got any cool facts or stories about the T-34 or other wartime tech? Subscribe to our channel to catch more gripping history tales and drop your comments below. Let's keep digging into the past and celebrating the brilliance of those who came before us. See you in the next one.